Hang on. Vernon, does this, yeah. does this trigger you? Hang on. Two, one, activate. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, no worries. Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Drone Out. Tonight we are joined by uh, Curry Kitten. Hello. Vernon. Hey. I, from Robot Wars. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Uh, my little Tony. Bonjour. Eating oven baked carrots, I believe, in chip Chips. form. Um, Weird. Potatoes weren't vegan enough. Uh, Andy RC. Good evening. And Andrew Slash Frank. Hello. I, I and I am Brighton to Life Lie or Jack. And uh, I thought I'd read the people the other way around. So hopefully it makes more sense. I miss your eye makeup. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I could take myself seriously. I kept. I. I was. I was literally cr cracking up when it looks horrendous. I, I watched some of that video back. It is horrendous. What was I thinking? <clears throat> I like. I liked it. And uh, disciplinary action will be brought up in the meeting. Ooh. Andy RC for not dressing up. <laughs> You've just, oh, said, you just said you couldn't watch it back, and now you're having a go at me for not doing it. I think yep. I think I was the one who had it. It didn't make sense either. Why? Because we all, all were trying to like you had me doing the. It didn't. I, I, no one knew who anybody was. Just now, was that's it, the whole point. Was it, it? It was the best episode ever. Yeah. Well, at least at least you could keep it posted this year or might the year before yeah was, we should explain to vernon it was a halloween special last week and and jack decided that we're all dressing up as each other and uh, i ran out of time and it kind of anyways yeah <laughs> and paul time we gave you five minutes beforehand you could have done something yeah um, all you needed for a jack was a sock a dodgy wig made out of a mop and some stains on your T-shirt. Well, I, uh, I, I had other other things I was doing. I apologise. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, for Halloween, we actually dressed our drones up, and uh, everyone here dressed our, their drones up in their own fancy fancy dress costume, which was fun. Their little where, where are you based, then, Vern? And I'm seeing a, a big workshop here. Are you? Yeah. A, a um, I'm actually in the lab. Um, I'm actually in the lab at the moment. Um, I thought it was a good setting to have a, you know, just a. Just to have this drone out, you know, might as well be in the action uh, as you, you know. Yes, yeah, Vernon's winning on location. He's got like you know bits and bobs on a proper shelf and stuff. That's quite cool. Yeah, he's got a power supply in the back, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, are, are, you in, are you in the UK then, Vernon? Or in yeah, we're, I'm, I'm. I'm actually in our office in London right now. He's underneath the Robot Wars arena. <laughs> in a minute, like one's going to fall in from the pit. Right, can you explain all these references to Robot Wars, please? But, well, you ask, ask our guest. <laughs> can I just pause He's on it? Oh, yes, Sorry. What does Craig Charles smell like? I've got to pause everyone now. Yep. I've, got, I've got to interrupt because this is what we do. RDFBV has just sent us 14... Ninety-nine dollars. So in the super chat, thank you, mate. Yay. I'm not. I'm not allowed to do noises or anything anymore. So I just you can. Stop. You can do noises, just not. I just stop annoying. the chat halfway through and say thank you. So there you go. Thank you. Carry on. Sorry to interrupt everyone. No, that's what we have you here for. Carry on masticating. I'm the fluke, everyone. Do you want to read some people out in the chat, Tony? Out. Let's wait for uh, <laughs> let's wait for him to finish chewing. I'm eating. I really. I'm so sorry. Very professional. It's so, like, you know, you had all those hours during the day, and you decided to eat more food. I've done podcast. nothing today. I've been. Hang right. on. Let me just write a list of Tony's priorities. Right. <laughs> Hang on. Right. One mm. annoying Jack. That's and number one. Two eating. Yeah. I wouldn't call that fire. three watching dog poo on cam. <laughs> Four, let's drone out. Sorry, now we've has, got that has, straight. Has Vernon ever seen the show? Does he know what he's let himself in for? Here? Well, well, not. Not. Yeah, I, I have actually seen one episode and um it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, it's like I'm a I'm a drone fanatic, so you know, it's definitely up my street. 
My we very rarely drones. talk about drones. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like Unless more... NJ's on. We tried yeah. phoning him and we had no luck. There's like more lawnmower stuff on here than drones. <laughs> Look, we brought up lawnmowers once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, but it's the thing now, isn't it? So, Jack, okay, I'm just going to go through people. Sorry, Andy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Andrew FBV, the vaping FBV, Scott Watson, Clive FBV, what's up? Richard Warwick, Southwest FBV, Jay Jones, hello, mate. Under Fluke, what's up, bruv? Um, Rob Britton, hi, mate. Um, who else we got in it? RD FBV, thank you very much. Dave Story's in the chat. Lurgy one. Is that Lurgy one? I don't know. We got Zero. I think he was first. Thanks, Zero, for always being here. Anyway, that's uh we got Joker Vision as well saying it's his boring, so he can get he can get lost, can't he? Dick Dorius is in there. Southwest he Kitty. Oh, uh, I don't have a best friend. You're not friends anymore, you fell out. No, I just don't have a best one. Oh, right. <laughs> makes makes life easier at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> right i'm gonna carry on eating thank you bye uh, all right well we'll let vernon explain that the, all our veiled references to robot wars okay do you want to go how how i, I did my um uh, robot wars as a kid or what yeah, yeah. It's yes, exciting. I, I actually i actually built robots uh, as a kid and actually um when i was uh um growing up i, was, I think i was like 10 years old um built my first robot and then um Went to the Midlands Championship and uh, we absolutely wiped the table and uh, won every competition. And then we got through to the heats of the actual um, TV show, which is pretty cool. My robot was called Capstan the Beast. It had that was actually two robots. One had one was called Capstan. It had a a, um, a lifting mechanism so with very very sharp spikes. It would spike into things, lift them up, and then just carry them out and then drop them off the arena. And then the other one was just um, one with the flipping, which would flip it up and. Uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. So very yeah. much a Robot the, Wars fan. The best robots always were the ones who looked like a wedge of cheese. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, yeah. I remember the good old days. Anyway, what, what did Craig Charles smell like? <laughs> well, I never met Craig Charles, unfortunately, because we never made it through to the final of the show. But um, we, we did the Midlands heats, and then we got through to the actual TV heats, but then I never made it to the show because... I was only like, you know, 13, 13 years old. So oh, yeah. um, there are much better robots out there than mine. But, um, oh. you know, and they that just, was like. And they just brought that show back, Robot Wars, or am I making that up? No, they have, have, yeah. Did, didn't it go off again already? Because Dara took over and then. Yeah. Craig Charles was the best. He was like totally the best. He was like so much energy and so much like, yeah, come on. <laughs> Can you imagine the Let's Drone Out robot? Oh, oh, it'd be just, made out of a just toy be a yeah. potato. <laughs> yeah. well, I, did, uh, like evolution. I did rampaging chariots, which was like a kids' kids version of Robot Wars, where like there was there was a uh, some sort of RAF cadets uh, team that had like this titanium and aluminium and high powered whatever it was, and like as was made of like MDF and cardboard, so. Yeah, it didn't survive very long, but <laughs> it was entertaining. So, what was that your entry into RC then, Vernon? The and then did you progress on to? I mean, where did the whole drone thing come from? The idea and and everything. Well, I, I think like building drones was something I was really passionate in because I actually it led on from Robot Wars. So, um, when I was at university, I studied computer science and then um, design and business. So. I was quite sort of like, I loved to think. I went out to China in 2007 and um, learned how to do manufacturing around Shenzhen. So that's, it was kind of like the fusing of like the interest of robot wars, building stuff, and then also wanting to um, create something and then actually learning how to manufacture it. You just decided to do that though. You just up and went to China and, or did you have a connection there? Well, it was literally at the end of the first, um, and the end of the first year of uni, I was thinking, well, what am I going to do? Loads of friends were going off to Ibiza, some were going to Prague and just like various holidays. So I thought, screw it. I'm going to go to China. <laughs> so I spent my £1,500 overdraft, went to China, and literally just went to Beijing and said, literally, take me to the nearest factory. And they took me to um, 
uh, various factories around Beijing, and they said, you're actually in the wrong area because you should go down to South China where they make all the electronics. So I took a 26-hour train journey to Shenzhen. And then, um, six hour? Yeah, on a train, on a hard seat, on a train. <laughs> wow. That's a whole day and a bit on a train. Yeah, well, yeah. I was lucky to get a seat, actually. Most people have to stand. This sounds like the opposite of a typical team movie where they're supposed to go to China and then blow off the money and go to IB for clubbing and stuff. It's just like the reverse. Do you want to go to IB for... No, just go to China to learn how to build stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I actually enrolled on a three-month course in Beijing to study uh, Chinese, so that helped help to communicate a bit with the factories. Oh, um, how do I say I love you like a fish finger, Andy RC, in Chinese? <laughs> <laughs> huh. well, no. the RC. oh my god something like me how and that's better i've run out yeah that's no. it yeah the thing is, the tones. there's four tones and, and each one can mean different names oh my god god that's complicated so i, I, I should get the 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 bit out of the way because I, I i invited vernon on because he had a, something new to talk about but we we do have a, some slight history where I reviewed the uh, Microdrone 3.0, and I didn't like it. And it was mostly about this video, Vernon, that I've mentioned that you put out yeah. on your Indiegogo, which made everything look like it was better than a Phantom. And then what you actually got somewhere down the line was something very different. So, I mean, I'm happy to talk about that and the ins and outs, but what came up from that when we talked briefly before was about the sort of timeline as how the crowd funder works and i'm almost guessing here's our target and what you get is not necessarily target i mean can you talk us through exactly how it works yeah so i mean crowdfunding is a great way to to launch something and actually create something brand new from scratch something that didn't exist before so i mean we started building microdrone in 2011 it was the first microdrone ever i mean there wouldn't have been a microdrone if we hadn't started microdrone in 2011 and then in 2012, you know, all the other Chinese manufacturers copied our base model. And then you saw the Ladybird and the Hubson and all the others, the kind of cascading of drones. And really, the microdrone was the idea of creating something which was unlike the bigger drones. That you, we, we saw the, the Parrot AR drone as like the big sort of uh, consumer drone. And it was really popular, but it was like a thousand euros. Um, so it wasn't kind of affordable. So I saw those little mini helicopters. I thought I could make a drone from this, but make it mini. So that was the idea of microdrone. And then you know we put it out there. We sold um, you know five thousand units, and that was popular. It, was, you know, it didn't have any camera. It was very basic. It couldn't do any sort of auto leveling. It just hovered basically. And then um, uh, a year later, we came out with the Microdrone um, Microdrone 2.0, which was the one with the camera, a little keychain camera, which we added to the drone, and that just completely changed it and went crazy. That sold sixty thousand units without even um, launching it to retailers. That was just uh, putting a link on our website, and then. Um, Featuring it actually, that was um, the the launch of TechCrunch just wrapped. We did a demo on the stage, and then it was streamed, and um, all the tech journalists picked it up and saying, "This is the most amazing little drone ever, and you got to get one." And that was just um, that was the first like you know big big breakthrough. I but think it's still it's still I, pretty crude. I think it's a shame, and and it's still it's still the case today that whilst while you were doing all of this, they were there copying your stuff, and of course can do it for cheaper and all sorts of stuff that that's like still one of the biggest problems now is than just copying stuff and i, I don't know i guess yeah, that... still are. absolutely they still are i mean everyone's like all of the factories all of our competitors they're still watching us what we're doing so we, we've got to be really careful when we actually announce products and it's the same with every consumer product now you've got all these guys walking around ces with their phones and clipboards and saying oh yeah get, get details on that and stuff these are all like competitors and one thing it can be good to, you know, competition is good because it, um, you know, gets more people, you know, each one gets better and better and better. So that's good. But it does mean you're vulnerable of being ripped off very quickly. I mean, when the, when, um, when the Hubson launched, it was like, like $30. Like that was less than our production cost for the three, for the 2.0. And yeah. it's like, how were they doing it? Like the only way they can do it is by um, using super cheap labor, you know, which is, really ethically dodgy or they can use cheaper materials or they can just ship it from china where there's no you know no tax or duties or anything like that and you know that's how can you compete with that you know you can't so you gotta you gotta develop and innovate 
and come up with new technology really, really quickly. And that was a, that's that's where Mike Jones has been really successful because we had the 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and we're coming out with a new bottle, which is going to come out pretty soon, which is another step up from, from our previous model. And um, yeah, this is the video I'm talking about crowdfunding. So um, crowdfunding was a great way to launch our product. We had some great ideas for 3.0. We wanted to make a drone, which was a step up from the 2.0. So instead of having that little um, fiddly wires, which had the 2.0 to connect the camera, we designed a really beautiful uh, magnetic system, which just clips on without any wires at all. And that was that was pretty breakthrough. That was that was really innovative. It had a neodymium magnet, which were really powerful, tiny, lightweight magnets. It had live streaming uh, SD card. It had reversible polarity, so you could put it both ways. Uh, we designed a prop guard for it, so you could actually protect it from around it. And um, we had a 720p HD camera, which was um, the best camera module we had out there um, at that time. Obviously, this was like four years ago now, so um, the cameras have got much better. And um, and then we put on on Indiegogo and uh, launched it, and that was it. You know, it was really really popular, and it um, yeah, lots of people supported that. To uh, to fill in a little bit more of that story, though, there was. You went for another option before Indiegogo, right? Involving the the television, maybe. Um, when you were just saying, yeah, yeah. that's when right. You, when you were just sitting there saying sixty thousand units, I thought, hmm, this sounds like a very sort of like a pitch almost to a uh, Shark Tank or Dragons Den. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was on Dragons Den in two thousand nine. Yeah, so I got back from China like a year later. After, and a year later, I designed this little thing called the Terror Wasp, which is like a little flying helicopter with a contra-rotation blade. Um, you know, like the Pico Z had a single blade. I designed a contra-rotation one where one spun that way and one spun that way, and it would hover. And that yeah, was... Um, uh, I, I, I was really surprised that um, that no, nobody went for it, but um, yeah, was it, wasn't it... Uh, is it Peter Jones that um, has got involvement in Horizon Hobby or something like that? Yeah, Blade, Blade's Toys, yeah. That's but, right. Oh, yeah, he saw you as a threat, which is... Yeah, of a conflict which is interesting because on the last series of dragons dan he um i don't know if you saw it but uh a, a, some drone safe company went in there and, and he sort of went this is a great idea and invested into it so uh yeah, yeah. May, and then maybe uh perhaps he he maybe regretted not going with it after if he'd have seen the uh the success of the indiegogo campaign perhaps yeah, well, actually, though, it, it actually worked out pretty well. I mean, it was shown to six million people on on, on national television, and um, we manufactured we we managed to get enough orders to manufacture that product. Actually, I went on the Dragon's Den with two products. One was the Terra Wasp. That was the one we actually went ahead to manufacture, and the other one was the helicopter car. So we, we designed a, a car and a helicopter in one, but um, we we didn't get enough interest from that, so we didn't manufacture it. So, um, but that was pretty cool. That was that was an idea where you drive along, drive along, and then take off. And actually, since then, other manufacturers have actually taken on that concept and actually made it. But I don't think I've, you know, I don't, I, they haven't been very popular from what I could see. Yeah, I've not seen a, more, more of a novelty. Sort yeah, of. more gimmick, really. Yeah. So, so to go back to what Wayne's question, so we're talking about Indiegogo. Um, and Wayne's question is regarding there was a, a video put up, it was sort of like a, a show reel of, um, you know, what, what we're trying to do. But I think, um, the impression that I got from it was like, oh, the, well, the product kind of doesn't exist yet. This is sort of a, um, th this is sort of like what what we're looking to get at the end of it. But when 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 I saw that, because I saw I saw that video before there was a product. Yeah. And then, and then I looked at the price, and I I I sort of said to myself, well, there's no there's no way that it's going to come out looking like a phantom what whatever the case you know for that price kind of thing but i think um what wayne's talking about is maybe people did think that is that what you were saying wayne or or, or is that not your issue with it i my, my issue with the whole product is that video now i got i got the drone quite late because a magazine sent it to me and asked me to write a piece for it um and it it kind of rang a bell with me so when i had a look for it around the net i found that video and i was like what this is this is crazy and you know we're, we're coming here from the angle of we know quads and what's possible with the technology we're talking about but other people don't and i i made a suggestion that it felt to me slightly dishonest about what you were sort of presenting well, as showreel versus what you actually get i will say this 
actually, if we'd got that gimbal done and that little micro gimbal, if we'd actually managed to make that work really well, that video would have been very accurate because we sh all that footage is 720p video. And um, if we made that gimbal and it worked as we'd, as we'd expected it to do, then um, the stable the stabilization would have been really good and we would have had smooth HD video. And the problem is um, the, the gimbal was um, didn't work out quite as, you know, during the development process, the gimbal needed um, a lot more refinement. And um, so what we had to do is we had to choose a design which would retrofit onto the drone we shipped. And what happened is um, we had to change it from a two axis gimbal to a one axis gimbal. And then the end result was, it was okay, it would, it would stabilize it in one axis. And uh, there was lag, which was um, um, notable, which we'd planned to um, uh, smooth out with EIS. And uh, that would have done a, you know, a, a reasonable job for the one axis. But um, I would have really liked if we'd made the two axis, because then we would have had uh, HD, live stream, and the two axis gimbal all in one. That's really what we form. And I think what you said, I think Andy's um, uh, a review of the, of the original video was actually really fair. You know, we started out with one aim was to make, a, we, had, we had this idea to create a product with lots of different features. And it was way ahead of what was on the market at that time. You know, we had so many really cool stuff in there, so much cool stuff, like the where the battery clips in, the way the camera connects, had the, all those functions of the live stream, the, the SD card, and the modularity, so the way the arms just clip out without any soldering, uh, the, the easy way to change that, um, the, the, the way you can change from different speed settings, the slow, fast, insane, and uh, a few different um, options and ways to configure it. An app, a really beautiful designed app, uh, I hope you've all seen that. It's a really beautiful design, and um, it's much, much better than what you see on any of the current um, sort of small drones out there. You know, with a really poorly designed user interface. Um, so those elements of the of the Micro 3.0, um, we delivered it, and it was fantastic, and you know, it works really, really well. But the stabilization—that's the only thing which didn't we didn't really work out, and I needed more work. So um, I think if we nailed that gimbal, it would have been a much better product. I mean, if you look at products like the Tello, I mean, the Tello now, um, um, even though it has a, a fixed camera, that still results in smooth video, which is good. But um, and there's a lot of problems with Tello, obviously, still, because it's um, only a um, it's live stream with no HD camera, no SD card. But um, uh, with the electronic stabilization, it works really well. So um, no. it's... <laughs> I also think at the time as well, I mean, it's quite easy to say now, but at the time I remember when uh, Micro Drone 3 was coming out, there were a lot of people trying to make these little tiny gimbals work. Um, I remember like people trying to use the little tiny brushless motors that we use on microcopters now to try and sort of get a three axis gimbal on a Mobius style camera. And I think um, every any time somebody tried it, mm. the camera was just always too light. Uh, and regardless to um, the, the fact that it was sta stabilized and level, you'd get shakes, you'd get vibrations. And in, in the end, I just think there the was a limit to, you know, what can be stabilized. Somehow, somehow DJI have cracked that, haven't they? Well, they do both, don't they, I believe. DJI do. Um, uh, the the image stabilization as well as the the three axis and obviously they've got a lot more resource and uh, yeah no one else seems to have cracked that I think the Mavic Air is probably the small smallest one to have a gimbal yeah. or the Spark so um, yeah I think well, Andy, Andy I've got some exciting news for you okay uh, we've cracked it so we've cracked it making a two axis gimbal using a brushed motor not a brushless motor but a brushed motor. And uh, now you know, that smoothness and the anti-vibrations, uh, we've done it, and it's um, and uh, we can make it in a micro now. Hmm. So, so what actually happened? Because I never got to check out the the gimbal. So, did you release a gimbal uh, to the to the Indiegogo people? Uh, so we did, yeah. Um, so originally the idea was to have a two-axis gimbal, and it would fold up. So um, I've actually got a three point out here. Um, so the original idea was the gimbal would would um, sit below the drone, and it would. Um, it would um, sort of retract when you, when you take off. Yeah. And um, when you fly forward, obviously, and left, right, it would stabilize. And um, we used, um, we chose uh, brushed servos to do that. And um, 
what we found is that it was too much vibrations. Um, the vibrations, the micro vibrations from the drone would be amplified as it moved down the arm. So um, the end result was pretty shaky and it did actually work. It worked to a certain extent, but it was just not at the quality or it was un unacceptable for me because um, what I wanted it was to have smooth video and that's what I wanted for the micro drone three was have smooth HD video at an affordable price and um, it couldn't do that. So we had to, um, I think it was update eight on our Indiegogo campaign. Um, we explained the problem of the gimbal we'd had and we came up with three alternatives. Um, you can actually check that out on Indiegogo. And we came up with three alternatives which would um, would make this um, gimbal work. And uh, one was using a um, uh, one axis gimbal uh, on, a, on a set of arms. And the second was a, um, uh, a one axis gimbal on a, um, integrated with the camera. And, um, and then the third was the original design um, which had a shaky video. And um, we actually designed, decided to go to option two because it was the most smooth out of all three. And we manufactured that and we shipped it to all of our backers who did buy that. There were only 8,000 of those um, people who bought the, the gimbal. So um, out of those 8,000, they all received it. And, um, but the, the challenge was, you know, that was one of those painful things about the Micro 3.0 project. It was, it was um, having to change that when we'd originally started out with a um, plan to have a two axis gimbal. And uh, one of the challenges was making it work on the Micro Drone 3 and retrofitting that, that change of design into the hardware, which had already shipped to the backers. And uh, we did actually manage to ship that and make it, but it meant having this really clumsy little wire, which was really fiddly to put on. And um, it worked, but it's not the ideal design we would have liked. And, uh, yeah, there, were, there were two shames about the gimbal. First is, I, one of the things I did like about uh, what you came up with was your battery connector for putting on the camera and it's like this is great You can just put it on and it powers up the camera and stuff, but of course you had that extra cable Just what, defeats the point. It's like, what's it, the point of a yeah, wire which, and a beautiful magnet design? And the, the other thing I guess which would have been much nicer in retrospect was to have some sort of Potentiometer on the control because what you had is you flick a gimbal switch and then at that yeah. point you've got your left stick still works, but your right stick becomes a gimbal control. So yeah. as long as you're in the right place and you're, you're not drifting, you're okay. But it, it was tricky. And, and your review so. was like, what the hell were they thinking? <laughs> your, your review was like, why on earth did they do this? What, what was the point of making it like this? And, and they're the most stupid thing to do, to make it like that. And I'll tell you why. And, the, and it's a very simple explanation because we'd already shipped the drone and the controller. And, and what we had to do is we had to make, a, make the gimbal work with all of the drones that had shipped. And the only thing we could work with was the clicking switch on the handset and the right stick on the controller. So that was the only way we could do it. Otherwise we would have had to have designed a whole brand new controller. And then uh, the cost of doing that, opening a second mold, which is, you know, for those controllers, it's about a hundred thousand pounds to open a, a huge injection mold for that. Uh, we would have run out of cash and no one would have received it. So we had to make it work within the existing um, product that had shipped. And um, it was pretty clever how, how we managed to make it work because I think many other crowdfunded products would have failed and they would have given up at that point. But the fact that we were able to make it work and actually ship it was, um, you know, it's more testament to the engineering team. Is that actually sort of um, an, an expectation of, of crowdfunding as well? Is that the people who are backing you, do they, um, is, is there an understanding that, this actually, you, you could back this, but actually it, it, it may not, you know, be a success. There may be, is that like all part of the crowdfunding risk and, and stuff? Well, I think there's a couple of really good points there. You know, the first thing is that um, a lot of the uh, micro drone backers are people who love drones and they love the technology and they wanted to see something cool come out. And um, as a drone, Using myself, I was wanting to create something which is really cool, which I would I would use, and so there's an element of wanting to help support something to create it for the first time. Second thing is, um, you know, people get a discount on the actual product which ships. Um, you see now um, the micro the retail price. If you want to buy it, um, when we after we'd um, um, launched to the public, it was two hundred dollars. But many of the early backers they were able to get it for one hundred and twenty five dollars. And um, that's actually the, the, the manufacturing cost of what it cost us to produce. So as a thank you, we were able to offer it at that price. 
and um, that's that's one so, of the perks. So it's of essentially, it's essentially a loan, Ben, and you actually don't you don't profit off it. It's that's what it costs to get the product out there. Yeah, of. exactly. You know, we spent hundreds of thousands of pounds on just tooling. Uh, we had to make like dozens of injection molded tools for the for every part of the drone. And um, those are big chunks of steel which need to be milled down with these great machines. And um, you know, if we were manufacturing that in the UK, that would probably cost you know, up to a million pounds. But because we were able to manufacture this in China, these there are companies in the whole South of China which actually specialize in uh, making tools. So you can just send them the um, the, the geometry, the, the industrial drawings, and um, they'll put it on the machine and they'll just cut out a, a mold for you, which is fantastic. But did, did, was the controller, I, I haven't followed it so much, but the, the the original controller that it did ship with, at, at that mm. time, were you not planning for there to be a gimbal control then? Or did, did the gimbal control come later, like in your sort of design phase, I guess? Well, the original idea was to have it controlled by the app. So you could control ah. it in the app. And that's, it does work with the app. So if you connect it with the app and, and um, use the gimbal, and you can control the gimbal within the app, but it's clumsy, and and um, we people people did want it with the controller. It's because you have to take your hand off those and put it on the thing, which is equivalent to taking your hand. You yeah. still lose your right stick, essentially. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so from there, then we've got a new product. Then, uh, and is it? I take well. Actually, uh, there's a, another thing I think that um, we should talk about as well because from from that point on, you could you could go into shops well in the UK certainly and see micro drone in the shop. So yeah, I'm guessing that uh, you know you struck a deal or with some retailers at the same time, or or was the buzz of the Indiegogo campaign the success? I mean, you could you'd say that was a huge success, and and also how 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 did that happen as well? How did it get so much uh, buzz to, to get that amount of backers as well? Just because it was well, the I think, first. I think the, the first thing about the retail, um, you know, we um, retail, retail buyers are very, very picky and um, they will only um, sell something which is the best. I mean, they won't, they won't obviously, they'll, they won't sell products which, which they don't, um, you know, approve. Um, so we, um, we, we shipped to our backers and then we went um, and, uh, Said right, well, where, where what's next? So let's um, let's see if we can sell this into stores. So we um, we realised the best part of Micro Drone 3.0 was the drone itself and the camera. Um, it didn't have a gimbal, but that didn't really matter because the drone itself is actually um, a really really good product. And it, the way you fly it, I mean, we've developed. I think, I and mean, I'm I might be biased, but I think Micro Drone 3.0 is flies the be is the best micro on the market in terms of flight stability and, and responsiveness. So we, we, we work really hard on the flight controls. And when you fly it, you can fly outside, you can fly indoors, and it's really good and um, responsive. And the way it works and the battery power, the way it'll drain it right down to zero before it cuts out. Um, all of that has been developed over a number of years. So in terms of flying, it was you know a really, really good product. And um, the camera itself was a 720p, and we'd up in the in the six months after um, the first batch of production, we'd upgraded that to a uh, wide-angle lens camera and, and improved the responsiveness of the Wi-Fi, and um, we shipped um, these um, samples to all the retailers, and um, they they liked it. And um, we we sold it in um, uh, Dixon stores, um, in uh, in Selfridges in America. We were in Fry's Electronics, uh, B and H Photo in the Middle East. We were in the Virgin Mega stores, and um, yeah, it sold in hundreds of stores around the world, and this was in 2016 uh, and uh, and part of 2017, and you know, it sold really well because it was just you know they'd all seen the little drones, they'd seen there's no um, user user friendly design. They're like they'd break and they'd you'd bite, they'd crash it, they'd bin it. So customers were really angry. The way we could just change an arm or just you know swap out the battery without having to solder it together or connect any little thing, it worked really well. Just as it is that the the drone and the camera. So retailers um, really liked it, and it sold really well in retail. Um, but obviously, the, the the gimbal was uh, kind of a sort of after um, modification, which wasn't ideal. Um, but as it was, you know, the drone and the camera was a pretty good drone, and it sold very well in retail. So I take it from from the success of the the retail. That's that's where you are able. To, you're not doing crowdfunding for the next project. I take it. 
Um, so actually, we um, we you know, I think crowdfunding is is a very very amazing way to launch a product, and it validates it very quickly. So you know, if Microjourn three point oh hadn't been um, popular, if people didn't like the, the stuff we'd come up with, they wouldn't have backed it. And um, you know, like just the fact that it could fly upside down was pretty pretty cool, and and people like that. And the fact that they could get it for one hundred twenty five dollars and you know, it's very popular, and um, we had a great plan for it, and we wanted to come up with some really cool stuff. Um, I think what people really want is three things. They want video, which is HD, so, you know, 720 or, or 1080p now. They want stabilized, smooth video. So they want buttery smooth video. They don't want shaky footage. And um, that's what all of the current micro drones have out there. You know, since micro drone 3, there's been an epidemic of small drones, and they all have these little tiny keychain camera quality videos um, with shaky footage. And they're just sort of got a cheap drone and just put a cheap camera on it. And um, people buy it thinking that they're going to get smooth video like uh, like a professional drone, and they can't. So if we can create a small, affordable drone with a smooth, high-definition video, which you know stabilizes it with a proper gimbal, uh, that's what people want. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's have you got key Have you got any to hand you can show us? Oh, so our next model, um, we're going to be coming out with it in um, in probably January. We're going to be releasing that. I don't, I can't show it today because, um, just because it would, um, just because it's, it's not ready. Any, but uh, you got any other ones? And what 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 size are they? What what are you talking micro? How how big? Oh uh, yeah, palm size. Um, you know, uh, same size as the micro drone. People want a small drone that can fly indoors. And you know, things like the the DJI Spark. That's a great drone and uh, one of the best consumer best selling consumer drones. But the problem is it's still too heavy. It's um it's not suitable for flying indoors and it's not really um it's not really user friendly for, for kids and for um for you know for small compact use. You know, people want a drone which is um like I'd say like 150 grams is the ideal weight for a drone. And um that's uh, that's what we've been working on. All right. So can you tell us some of the specs like so you've mentioned it's a two-axis gimbal and it's brushed. So I always get a little bit wary of that of this because sort of servo-based gimbals, I think of that's the old days. And you're they're always a little bit clunky. And back mm. before brushless, like the pros were using belt-driven gimbals. So have you yeah. you've actually got a, a sort of a brushed motor gimbal that's properly smooth then? Exactly. So there's there's that's the point the most the most innovative part of our new model is the gimbal. And at the moment, drones with gimbals, they have to have brushless motors because of the way the motor controllers work, the speed controllers. They need speed controllers and brushless, brushless motors to keep it smooth. But um, uh, since then, there's um, a new component manufacturer which, which has come out with a motor controller which can drive a brushed motor in the same way as a brushless motor, the same smoothness. Basically, it zaps it one way with a pulse and it zaps it the other way with a pulse. And then it repeats it thousands of times a second, like 15,000 times a second, until the, the, um, the brush motor is, is perfectly smooth. It, it could move fluidly up, um, up and down. And so when you put that into a two-axis gimbal, it can work uh, just like a brushless motor. And that's, um, that's the big innovation of our new model. And um, that's how we were able to get it working like a proper gimbal. And you, and you don't need ESCs for it, presumably, then? Correct. There's no, e no EECs. So does that mean it's also brushed motors still? Uh, yes, it uses brushed motors, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so and the major advantage of that, you know, brushed motors are fantastic, and they're, 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 they're very underrated because brushed motors are really small, like they're super tiny, and they're low cost. So having brushed motors for the propulsion and the gimbal, you know, you, you, the bomber, instead of like, you know, the Spark is like, what, a $600 drone with the controller. You know, we're able to take everything from a spark in terms of functionality and then make it super tiny and make it small and light and affordable. And um, you know, if we can make that for under hundred bucks, under two hundred bucks, then um, I think that's that's a, a that, I think that's a game changer. I think. Well, I, I, hope, uh, I hope Andy gets one so we can actually see. Yeah, yeah. One on. of the main complaints I get regarding uh, what's Jack burning? burning? Jack, what are you? <laughs> It's saying light for to himself. There's no swearing. There's no. There's nothing gone off subject. We haven't talked about lawnmowers. So probably, probably set light to itself. That, that was. Right. That, I reckon that was his uh, uh, taxes or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, one of the biggest complaints I get regarding uh, brushed motors is the fact that they wear out. Now I've not experienced this, 
Uh, you know what, Andy? I've never worn out a brushed motor either. And I, I did a whole like good few weeks of racing with a tiny little 40 mil drone with brushed motors every week, putting like 15 lipos through it. And I, I didn't manage to kill a motor once. So I'm not, I'm not against it. And in something lightweight, do you know what I think it is, Wayne? I think, I think the thing that can kill a brush motor is running them whilst there's tension against it. So let's just say, um, I don't know, you've crashed, you're upside down, and the mm. thing and the thing's still armed. The, the motor's going to burn out. And I, I just want—I mean, the, the first thing I do when I crash any model is disarm. And I, I just wonder the because because people are saying, ah, oh, I've got this brushed uh, quadcopter. And uh, I've had to replace the motors once every two weeks. And I'm thinking, I've got brush, I've got copters that are a year old that I, mm -hmm. you know, I've flown a good amount of time that I've never had to replace a motor. And yeah. I, I just wonder um, if, if it's well, that, you know. The yeah, fact I can actually tell you about um, the reason. And um, the main reason, we've researched this a lot because all our micro units have used brush motors um, from the beginning. The major reason for wearing out brushed motors is the... Um, the shaft and um, what happens is um, they um, people like experienced pilots they never crash the drones so um, they're, they're perfect and um, they'll last a long time but a lot of new users they will um, crash the drone and um, and even a, a slight knock into a wall and that will just bend the shaft ever so slightly but, and enough to um, cause a bit of tension so um, when it starts spinning, it's it's spinning at an angle, and mm. so what happens? It 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 wears the motor out almost like within a couple of minutes. Uh -huh. My washing machine up. never crashes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So actually, what, what we did do is, and um, we worked with our motor, motor manufacturer, Chow Lee, uh motor manufacturer, and we've come up with a motor with a 1.2 millimeter shaft, and that's much stronger, and um, it's very um unlikely to to break in the same way as the one millimeter shaft does. Ah, that's really interesting. That will probably explain why. I, yeah, because I, I wasn't really crashing a lot, but then people were telling me, ah, oh, brush this rub it. And, and it just wasn't making sense to me. But yeah, that, yeah um, so so it's the, because yeah, the props just push on to the little tiny shaft. Yeah. That out, so they're getting bent. And then when it's bent, it's sort of creating resistance in the, the exactly. So it's people. Yeah. Are, so that's, so yeah. Uh, okay, that makes sense. It gets super hot when it's um even if it's bent ever so slightly, um the resistance when you're when you're spinning a motor at twenty five thousand RPM, it just gets hot so quickly and then it dies. It just it just can't take it. Yeah. Oh that, no, it's interesting. That's interesting. Tony, are you good at bending shafts? <laughs> I knew Jack would have to he's like it's, this, uh, is, this has been far too, this has been far too serious. It's like Session of beavers and butted. Uh, he said, "Sure." Jack, Jack's like, right, right, we'll start a fire because that, that'll get." I, I, had, I had another question coming from Vernon, so Come I on. guess the, another thing that was missing, and that's why the gimbal was so hard to use on Micro N3, was of course position hold. Now, yeah, lots of advances here. Some sort of optical flow sensor or something, because you were talking about indoor flying. So I'm guessing you haven't got anything GPS, but have you oh. got something to position hold it? Actually, that's the second second um that thing that customers want in a drone. They want it to fly autonomously, so fly completely hands off. They want it to have a gimbal with stabilized video, and they want high definition. So um, the new drone has actually um, got both of those. Um, we're using a Qualcomm based um, uh, framework, which does use um, you know. Uh, optical flow and altitude hold. So you let go of the sticks, it will just sit there in the sky. And um, yeah, that's um, that's a big step up. And because you know, Microtrone 3 is all manual. So there's a bit of a learning curve to flying that. And um, that's probably one of the reasons why it's so hard for a lot of people to fly for the first time. Because, you know, one of the biggest bugbears was being like, oh, this is so hard to fly, I can't fly it. And um, and the video is, is, is shaky because it's always moving about. So we realized this and um, we came up with a fully autonomous flight controller for it. And this is a custom built one. It's um, We took part of Qualcomm system for this, but um, it's uh, still um, built by us to um, make a, into a micro because um, you know, you'll see it, there's existing Qualcomm drones out there like the Dobby and the Mark drone. They fly really stable and they're really good, but they're, they require um, very um, large systems and, and powerful systems. So it was taking that and applying it to a micro. Uh, and that's what we've done. 
Yeah, they've got like umbrella chips in them and all sorts, haven't they? Like, pro yes. like stuff you find in a mobile phone, that's it, and that's why yeah. they're expensive. So, so is this this next product? Is it going to be more of a premium price? Then I take it. No, we wanted we wanted to make it affordable. So our target is to make it under two hundred dollars. That's um that's the challenge. That should be yeah, because I mean you can look at Derby and you know, those sort of ones. Mind you, those are brushless. Is it, isn't Dobby like a Harry Potter thing? <laughs> like it gives him like a, a scarf or a sock or something. Don't uh, don't mention the socks. <laughs> this is going to trigger Jack again. FX Node wants to know what what flight controller is in this thing. So this is a, this is a it's a it's developed by us. Um, we actually designed the flight controller. I've actually got one here. Actually, hold on a sec. The Vernon flight controller. Any of you guys wonder what's in the parts? Anyone know what's in the parts? Weed. To him there. <laughs> like, people in the chat have been like, "It's stew." This is the uh, this is the flight controller for our new model. It's actually three of them here. I was going to say it's bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah. Pop it off. Um, snap, snap the PCB. Come on. No, 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 it's not populated yet. I, I've, really, I've populated these two, but these, this one, um, this one still needs populating. But oh. um, it's got all the technology in, like everything, every sensor, and and um, so you can just hover on the spot. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's what people want in a drone. They want it to fly like a proper drone, like like a big Phantom or a, or a Spark or a, or a Mavic. But um, it's about taking that and making it super tiny, and that's been the challenge for the last uh, two years. So how do you think this this new one's going to compare to the um the Tello? Um so that's going to be the one I think lots of people are going to compare it to. Yeah, so so Tello is a great little drone. I think it's, Tello is DJI's answer to Micro Drone 3 really. And um they they realized that they had to come up with a micro because, you know, Micro Drone 3 did so well in retail. Um in terms of Tello, there's a lot of limitations as well. It, it hovers really good. So it'll sit there in the sky and and flies really good. Um but the biggest problem is it, the stabilization of the camera. It's, um, it uses EIS. It's a, first thing is it's a fixed camera. So you're quite limited in, in the quality of the video. It uses EIS as using windowing. So it reduces that from a, a 1080 down to a 720, then uses windowing as it does the roll and, um, and part of it for the pitch. Um, so the problem is it doesn't have a gimbal. And that's, that's the biggest limitation because when you're outside, it will just, um, if you're being buffeted by the wind, it will. Um, uh, tilt at beyond the angle of the EIS, and then you always have to have a smaller resolution, which is the biggest um, uh, downside to Tello. So, um, stabilization perfect, um, uh, the smooth video, you know, they get that with the EIS, and um, coming out with the EIS and a gimbal together, uh, that will be um, that will be um, what people want, and that will give you really good footage and um, smooth video. Okay, another question. The pots to your right hand side. <laughs> what is in them? Oh, that's a, that's actually one of our testing rigs, and we use that for testing the camera. So, um, and making sure that the camera is, um, you know, we, we program it and we we um test it. So it's got little um, um, colors and stuff which tests the lens, um, and yeah, it's a oh, clean. It's a clean room. There you go, it's people. <laughs> it's a clean room. box. It's, it's not clearly a pot. Yeah, it's actually um, it's um, it's uh, resistant to any um, RF, and it's also um, it's got multiple sense, multiple tests in there. We call it the test rig. Yeah, I was going to say I can see some sort of screens below them as well. Is that the? Yeah, the... that's actually running on a Raspberry Pi. That it that it automates all of the tests. So you plug it in. My Pi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you put the drone in there, um, plug it in, and then it will um, run the um, connection. It will set the password. It'll do some tests. It'll test the camera. Um, it'll test the IMU, all that kind of stuff. And then, and then it, once it's passed all those tests, then it's ready to fly. Brilliant. Mm, cool. So January, and it, it, sorry, is this going to be crowdfunded again, or is this just something you're you're working on and you've you, you've got the money from the previous stuff to develop this and, and launch it? Well, I think crowdfunding. I think we will go and launch it again on crowdfunding. I think you know overall. I mean, like. You'll see some I think, some complaints on social media, and that's completely normal. You see of every crowdfunding. Overall, I think it was a really good experience, and um, a lot of backers were really excited about the Microsoft Three, and they really liked it. You know, there were there were a lot of good reviews, and there were some um, bad reviews, but you know, overall, um, people liked it, and that was that that was the and we managed to ship it. So that was um, 
very positive and I, th I think the fact that we're able to deliver it is is a big thing and um you know um deliver a product which did you know a lot of the the key cool things that we we um intended to do so um yeah i think um you know i think we'll launch a new crowdfunding campaign on indiegogo and um you know we'll be um, engaging with everybody you know the, with the community answering questions and um that's what i like doing actually jumping on online and just speak to everyone um there were a lot of challenges with indiegogo and um and, and crowdfunding but you know the, the indiegogo team were fantastic and they were great support and um their team are full of hardware um people who understand products and they're very supportive so you know there was it was a lot of pain at times but overall it was it was fantastic and you know the fact that we were able to crowdfund that project and crowdfund the next one is is that's really nice and um if we can do it um a new one then um that'll be you know that'd be fantastic as well can you make sure your videos right if you can if you can film it with the actual prototype yeah yeah absolutely i'll be, I'll be yeah. super happy yeah. <laughs> I won't have any bad words to say then. Exactly. So you know, for the last couple of months, I've been actually going out all over the world, testing our, our new drone and capturing raw footage from our drone. So um, every everything you see on the new campaign is going to be raw footage shot from our drone. So um, because I, you know, I don't want to fall in the same trap again where I'm being accused of doing this and doing that and the final product not coming out with this. And I want to make sure that everything we have on our um, campaign and page is exactly as we've already de developed it. So everything you see on the campaign page is already completed and all already developed. Oh, cool. So it sounds like if the prototype's flying already and you've got footage, which obviously you can sneak as a look, we won't, we won't hold that against you. <laughs> so is it just a case really of, of getting the funding together to get like mass production and, and, and having it out there? Or is there still a bit more development stuff to do? Uh, so the, the main thing will be a mass, mass production. So we'll need to manufacture uh, uh, like 5,000 drones for, for to actually get to the level where we can send it to a factory to manufacture it. And so once we can get 5,000 uh, units confirmed, then we'll just hit the green button and we'll start manufacturing. And also um, there's some additional things that we want to come out with as well for our new model. And, and that will enable us. So, so we'll have different levels of functionality. So there's um there's a company in, in Boston called Neurala, which they make um AI machine learning. And um, we really want to integrate that technology into our drone as well. And uh, to give it smart shots, you know, things like you know, the equivalent of DJI's active track. And uh, that's something that we want to put into our new drone as well. Um, but um to do that, they need a certain level of commitment uh, financially to do that. So if we can that'll be like a stretch goal. So once we hit, once we hit our base line funding, then we'll go to the next level and see if we can um, yeah, make this thing with more functionality. Um, can, you, can you send it to Andy RC and Curry Kitten, please? Yeah, absolutely. I'll send you a sample so you can you can you can check it out. Oh, no, I thought he's off, he's off the wish he's off the Christmas list. <laughs> that man is not list. your friend, Vernon. He doesn't love what you do like I love Robot Wars. <laughs> well it, look if if you can come up with with what you're saying you can do then you know i'm happy to be converted i'm always wanting to love a product uh mm. basically yeah. uh, you know we all we all love flying it's when, when they slowly let us down we get a little bit upset about it but sure. yeah if it's all if it's all raw footage i cannot yeah. argue with it yeah that is the main so, thing and last month i was in cupertino at the apple park you know the apple the big round building the apple park building I yeah we've there. all been there <laughs> I, I I took the drone there to, to to I saw these amazing videos on um on YouTube of people who documented that um the building of that of that um building uh, with the drone and I wanted to recreate that see if I could recreate that same footage using a micro drone four and uh, the actual world footage you get is amazing so the the, the colors good the clarity is sharp and the, the the footage is smooth and that's what people want so yeah I was really pleased about how that came out. Sounds cool. good. Welcome yeah. from Frosty FPV, by the way. Yep. We've got a new new listener. Tornado Girl is my favourite at the moment. Direct donation to uh, uh, to the the Let's Drone Out PayPal. <laughs> That's more like it. She's, she's great. 
Have you seen her flying lately? That girl can fly, man. Amazing, yeah. Some of the best out there, I think. I think so as well. I'm just I posted saying, please put an HD camera on your quad, please. Has she not got HD camera? I think she likes flying really light drones, so she just DVRs everything. So I'm just praying that she's going to do She's so good at flying. I think she had her her normal flying spots. I saw her post a video. Yeah. They're saying they stuck signs up saying she can't fly there anymore. So she's just flying like the um, tiny whoop sort of things, but getting amazing like results doing all Matty stunts backwards. Yeah, she's all, all the backwards flying that I can't do. So um, you know, sometimes I quite like seeing DVR footage because it's kind of it's a bit more raw, and you're seeing exactly what you know guys are getting through the goggles, and I kind of appreciate that. Yeah, so do I. Agreed, but right, I'd love, big, I want to see it. Hopefully. Big, t- big topic before we end the show. This is going into overtime, but uh, Tony, what's this about you chopping down a tree? Oh God! Just because I live in Crawley wasn't me. You've murdered a tree. Yeah, I'd never do that. You'll be kicked out of the vegans' league. No, he's um, allowed to do that, isn't he? The tree's all right to kill. Be a vegan? No. Yeah, well, you can eat them, can't you? So. Well, I wipe my ass on them, but that's something else. Depends on the tree. Yeah. Oh, Tony, cutting down a tree at the golf club. So oh. <laughs> savage, isn't he? What about those trees that eat animals? Don't start getting Crawley Council bloody coming knocking at my door. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> what, about, what do you reckon it, about? Uh, I'd love to know a vegan point of view on. Um, Venus, on. So, Venus, so, so, say Venus. that again. I'd like to know a, a, a vegan point of view on Venus fly traps, which are plants that eat animals. <laughs> They're just getting their own back. <laughs> okay. I What's your opinion, to... Lord Vegan? Well, it's, it's the plant eating the, uh, the flies, not me. You're a day late, ain't you? <laughs> or have you just lost loads of weight? I don't like that I can't hear what people are saying. <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> hang on. I'll turn them back up. Here you go. Is it, is it you're a day late or you've lost loads of weight? Because no, of the... just lost loads of weight. <laughs> because of the skeleton. He, he, he couldn't eat a... Uh... MCM Expo because the lines so, are so long. So I've just wasted away. <laughs> you, got, you need to. Hang on. Let's, there you go. Is that better? If I stand up right. Halloween <laughs> never ends. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What do you want from a drone? Jack, your guest Bye. is asking something. Sorry. On. I- so, sorry, change the subject. I was wondering if you if you if you ever done robot wars for drones. Me? Yeah. Why? No, no, I, I haven't. Think, I think you'd enjoy that. Yeah, I, I would totally, man. I would, you know. Yeah, we could fly but... a spud into them and then it would turn into but chips. I've seen in the US they have a game of drones. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That, that's I've I've been involved no. with that for the last three years. And um we did a make phone and I had the little micro drone flying around the game of drones and being smashed to pieces and just like chunks flying everywhere and drones just going full pelt and that's so much fun. I think you, Jack, I think you'd like that. You should check it out. But, but they, they started didn't do that in the UK. I well, don't know. I did a I did an event. Um, we called it Battle of the Drones and um, we got a bunch of micro drones and put them in a in a, in a cage. I'll send you the link on the chat and so you can check it out. Yeah, because um, like they started putting drones in balls then. With yeah. nets hanging off them, and I was like, mm, "That's cheating now." Yeah, you want yeah. to replace the blades, you know, propellers with knives, <laughs> and have like a dog poo cannon. It's really hard if you do it with planes. They're so hard to hit each other out of the sky. Yeah. No, it's, it's not. Try. It, it's really hard. The trick is to not try hit each other. That's... Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Don't try and hit each other. It's exactly easy. Right. But if you've got three people trying to hit each other, it's just. It, yeah, it never happens. See one go past every so often. Yeah, there is. But surely Frank's got skill in that from Battle of Britain. And I, I just set them up to blow up. I didn't fly them, so you know. And then people blew them up while they were still on the ground and things. Yeah, yep. yeah. Oh, yep. oh I'll just D- test if my guns work. No, don't do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep, that is boy Pet Gimp over there. He's very happy. Are back. you two doing a show after the show? Yes. So I am going to be on the Thursday night show.com 
in an hour at 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock playing some gay 80s music. Oh, great. I'm in definitely honor there. for my love of Andy RC. Excellent. Why Why's that got anything to do with me? Because yeah. I love you. Oh, that's nice. And I was you. I was inside you last week. <laughs> <laughs> I was... <laughs> That's too much information. And I liked it in there. I'm not sure I did. <laughs> <laughs> so um... as as your punishment, you got to dress up next week. I always dress up. I'm always this is me. I'm it's hello it's like I'm the same Halloween every day for me. Where is um where where is the uh, uh you know the uh, up north thing gone now, Jack? Oh uh, yeah, I mean. Have you got any like, lined are you up? Serious, like three, three hundred pounds. Please don't do that. What if I move? What if I move down south? It makes no <laughs> sense. I'll cross it out and put down <laughs> south. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to spell south <laughs> like that. But I will. Andy, Andy, I've seen your channel. I've I've liked your, a lot of your modding videos. If you ever want to come and hang out at the at the Extreme Flyers Lab and uh, come and play with some. New projects, you're very welcome. Oh, wow. That's, I would uh, normally say he doesn't go out, but I heard he was at a um, sports hall. Yeah, I've been trying to go outside, Jack, you know, off your recommendation. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do the lyrics go? That yeah. do, Jack. We don't no. need to. you got a child, you know. These, all, all, all these guys are, are probably... Uh, uh, all these guys would probably enjoy that as well. They're down. They're they're all based down south. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I just love the way he says that. Uh, so you are northern. Uh, <laughs> where's Where's the thing? Did you post it to me? It's on its way to you, Jack. Yes. Oh, that means he I hasn't have to posted it. it. He so hasn't you. posted it. I would have had it by now. We need to. Underflukes put in a lot of cash for that He's even, he stopped he stopped donating this week you know that oh, i don't yeah. blame him to be fair it's on its way to you guys and you'll see how difficult it is to do a review <laughs> no because we're gonna do it our <laughs> way not or, your you'll way. A, or you'll do a very good job and then vernon can send you microdrone 4 in, instead of sending it to wayne because oh, he wayne won't want to send it to us <laughs> I Frank, just tell him now, don't send it to us. How yes. much do you think a sapling would cost, an oak tree sapling, like the one that got cut down? And we're going to go to Crawley. LDO are going to plant one. They? You never you had to cut down an oak tree, did you, Tony? That's sacred. Yeah. I didn't. We're going Thank to God plant God's amongst all trees. So, yeah, the weekend, we're going to go to the golf club, find out whether it's true or not, find out what sapling it was, and then try and raise some money to... Get a, get a sapling to replace the tree. We're going to plant a new tree, aren't we, Jack? Yes. And name it Andrew slash Frank. It's tree of hope. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Someone in Crawley got their drone stuck in a tree and had at it with a chainsaw and cost uh, 20 grand to really? take the tree down. Yes. He didn't call Tony with his big pole. He just went at it with a chainsaw. Well, it made the news or something, did it? Yeah, it was all over the Crawley News. It's, it, it was on telly, BBC News, I think. That's not good for, for, for sort of... No, stuff. that's why we're going to investigate, because it could be fake news. Oh, uh, yeah. You know you know what it's like. Tr Top. You know, drone takes down tree, helicopter, plane. Yeah. All, all this shmalaki. Kills thing. children. I even yeah. saw, like, uh, someone say, oh, it was a drone that hit the tail rotor of that. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard that as well. Ridiculous. Maybe. Yeah, we get blamed for everything. <laughs> yeah. Crawley's then, full of really weird people. And then on the other side of the nonsense news, we've got the BMFA saying that mobile phones are destroying your transmitters. Um, what? I, hmm? well, Andrew slash Frank was telling me about this earlier, about BFMA blaming phones for incidents with planes. And if I think about it, every time I've had a crash... I've also had my phone with me. So it might not be me that's crap at flying. It might just be the fact that my phone has broken my transmitter. I like it as a working theory. Oh, what, mm. about, what about copters that rely on phones being there, such as the microdrone, such as DJI? Oh, they, they rely on the phone being switched. Apparently, no. Shh, don't ruin it. <laughs> it's the 
the BMFA have now ruled that you you got to move your phone away from uh, your transmitter because it's that 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 probably means um for like for line of sight big stuff i would imagine and, P and it, they're probably using spectrum as well <laughs> which, which is, well, you know, are the my... bmfa changing their number uh name uh the bfp vra are changing their oh. name so the british fpv racing association uh is proposing that they rename themselves the british drone racing association so that, that would be a is, lot better um, it's, it's easier to remember and say yes um but no, the, the uh, B BMFA, the British Model Flying Association, uh, have uh, said that after extensive testing, they have demonstrated uh, non-specific, variable but repeatable effects of having phones near uh, transmitters, particularly when data is enabled. I'm going to fly my next few videos with my phone strapped to my TX to see what happens. Do you not think that is the best phrase in the world? Say it again, Frank. It makes me a little bit giddy when you do it. Non-specific, variable, but repeatable. Oh, I got chills. Oh, it's <laughs> God. It, it was almost as good as um, listening to an audio book recorded uh, by our Lord and Master of the British Empire, uh, What's his name? Also, it, it's uh, sometimes repeatable. It's like the little star, isn't it? It's not specific what is repeatable. Come on, George, Chazza. Yeah, so that's that's the latest kind of... It's like when you buy a yeah. packet of nuts, it goes, you know, a little note, caution, allergy nuts. advice, contains nuts. nuts. Yeah. I think that should come on the BMFA card as well sometimes. Yeah. Like, yeah. They should hand out those little cards and tinfoil hats. But there was uh, the other bit of uh, warning about problems you might have flying is with the... The DJI batteries, the mm -hmm. TB50 and the TB55 batteries, smart batteries. That's only the Matrice or whatever it's called, isn't it? Uh, the Matrice is... and the Inspire, Three. apparently. Uh, is it Inspire 1 or 2? Uh, Inspire 2, I think. So everyone um, with an Inspire 1 is all right. So uh, plus to millionaires only. Yeah. But, yeah, if, if you've got one of them, you might want to not fly over things. Assume it's going to fall out of the sky until they get their firmware update out. Um, is the official advice of DJI and the CAA at the moment? Well, oh. how long, how many years did that take to figure out? Well, it I don't know. It might be a new thing. Who knows? Mm. Know. Probably people with phones in their pockets causing yes, a problem. That was it. It was the phones on the Definitely transmitters the interfering, <laughs> interfering with the batteries. That was what it was. Yeah, definitely. That's the one. So they tried shaking their batteries. What like copy toner? Just like in case it gets clumped up, you know, well, no, it's all the, the lithiums at one end, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, should we call it there? I think that's probably wise. Absolutely. So, we're starting to descend into madness, <laughs> yeah. Don't no, talk about lawnmowers, yeah. We, me and, is, is there a is there like, yeah, lawnmower robot? Is there a lawnmower? Yeah, they're museum. supposed to go around and discover your lawn and, and work it out, aren't they? And then mow it. And harvest our organs at the same time. Ah. <laughs> I don't think they advertise that feature. <laughs> British Lawnmower Museum. www.lawnmowerworld.co.uk Is that going to be our, our first... Uh... Stop on the trip. <laughs> it's a real thing. <laughs> it's a real thing. <laughs> it's a real thing. Is that going to be our first Patreon special live stream, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Southwest Kitty. Thank oh, you. God, it's near Liverpool. Oh, well, that's far that's, too far. That's north. North. Mate, we'd all have nosebleeds if we went up there. I know. No way of seeing the Isle of Wight from there. Anyway, do you want to uh, call us out, Jack? Yep, no worries. Uh, one, one more thing I wanted to say about, you know, the Boston Dynamics, they make those robots. Yeah. No, it's far too scary. Oh, that's, that's, that's really inspiring, actually. And, and um, I'd really like to make like a micro 
Boston Dynamics drone or a, 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 some sort of walking drone, which can actually just walk along and intelligently uh, navigate itself. That's like that would be really cool. Uh, Have you seen that guy on YouTube? I forgot his name now. Does loads of robotics. The the Open Dog project that looks yeah. really impressive as well. Yeah, yeah. The, looks like James, a lot of work. Yeah, James Bruton with X Robots and their Open Dog. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to make a, a Boston Dynamics micro and then manufacture that in Shenzhen and add it like a couple hundred bucks and have a little personal, little personal robot which can follow you and you kick it over and it'll get back up again and just and that it, and that it puts a pillow over your face when you go <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah no, let's not do nice that <laughs> Snuffles yeah. is my slave name. <laughs> Well, Elon Musk thinks we should be really scared of AI, and it should yeah. be. Yeah, should be oh, well. I already am seeing him Boston Dynamic stuff jumping, flipping over, doing backflips, yeah. and opening doors. That's enough for me. I was really? like, can, 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 I'm already can, scared can, of Tony, yeah. and that's low intelligence. Exactly. Right. Thank you uh, for tuning in and listening to Let's Drone Out. You've been joined by Andrew Slash Frank. Goodbye. Andy RC. Good evening. My tin four hat, Tony. Bonjour. Vernon. Bye bye. Curry Kitten. Goodbye. I've been Jack. Thank you and good night. Bye. Bye.